and welcome to One on One on Plus TV Africa. My guest today is Chinwe Egwim. Chinwe is a seasoned and renowned economist with over 400 published economic notes under her belt. Some of her work has covered the impact of empowering women on the economy. Her latest TEDx talk was focused on equipping the female economy. She's currently the senior economist at FBNQMB, which is First Bank Nigeria's Merchant Bank. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. Thank you Chimera. for having me. Certainly. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to see. I think I should be saying Happy New Year. Yes. <laughs> yes, we haven't seen this year. Sure. Yes, yeah, certainly. I love your work and all you've been doing Thank so you. far. And would like to know, let's start with this, how you've been able to transition to such a position where you are right now within the economic space and in Nigeria oh, wow. as a young lady. Oh, wow. Um, well, so I started my career, let's say, over a decade ago. And I was in Abuja as opposed to Lagos, Lagos. at the time. And um, yeah, like for me, it's really research. I always say this, it's research and just my thirst for knowledge that has helped me get to where I am. I'm still growing. And, 400 uh, economic notes, that's somebody's lifetime. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still growing, I still have so, so much more to do. But yeah, like um, just studying and um, also leveraging on the power of mentorship. Mm. So I've without even knowing, because now that's a buzzword, but without even knowing back then, I was very keen on just understanding how others that I see as um, inspirational or others that are my seniors, mm -hmm. how they did it. And I would um, try to carve out time to spend with them and you know ask questions. I'm, I'm, I'm a very curious person. So ask questions. And yeah, and I, I accept guidance. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like a sponge. So I would say that getting to where I am now has really been about just looking for how to equip myself, technically, my soft skills, and also understanding the power of mentorship and nurturing those relationships. Mm. Now, a number of young people mm -hmm. struggle with finding themselves a whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still a millennial, <laughs> right? But this is a very recurrent situation within the society. How were yeah. you able to find yourself with, at such a short time in your life and mm -hmm. then when you were just, you know, mm -hmm. coming up? I don't think there's any wow factor to that. I, I'm going to place um, the reason primarily on my parents, so my dad and his work ethic. That's what I watched growing up. Mm -hmm. And um, for those who are close to me and those that grew up with me, they would always remember this watchword focus. Because that's what, like my laser focus, like that's what he would always pour in me and my siblings. So um, from a young age, I've always been very purpose driven. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of the effort that my parents um, put in me with regards to trying to mold me. So, um, I, I, well, let me say like in university, that's when I kind of understood the kind of path I would like to follow. I'm very impact driven. Did you know what you wanted to study before you go into the university or it was while you were at the university you swapped and then no, went somewhere else? So that's an interesting story. <laughs> so <laughs> my dad actually changed what I was supposed to study. So I got admission into school. I was okay. supposed to do computer science. <laughs> it, was very, it was very annoying because I was supposed to do computer science and then he now comes home. I schooled in Ghana, by the way. This okay. is my bachelor's we're talking about. So for my bachelor's, that was in Ghana. And he came home that day and he said, oh yeah, like I spoke to the people that were doing this whole enrollment thing. I see that you got admission for computer science. I see your second choice was chemical engineering. Yeah, but like, I just feel like you're not so strong with physics. So I told him to switch it. Like I cried. I cried and he, he switched it to economics. Without your content? Yeah, without my content. But I'm thankful to him <laughs> now. Like I always say, Daddy, thank you for, mm. for doing that. But yeah, without my content. And um, yeah, um, the first year was a bit tough. Uh, but then I got, I got, I embraced it. And mm. yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. I can't imagine doing anything um, outside what I'm doing now in terms of. Um, how shall I say this, like technical stuff, I can't imagine. I, I love economics. I love the impact I'm able to make through my I written mean, you can output. apply it in your everyday yes. life. Yes, yes, I love it. So would you say that from your experience, mm -hmm. your, your dad must have followed through with all of your results to yes. know what his daughter's yes. strengths were? That's what he did, but I, I didn't get it then. I was just like, 
why are you doing this to me? I didn't, I didn't so get to that. we need to, to see parents do more of these yes. things to help their children find themselves. Yes, um, but you should also listen to your kids as well. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. someone who um, promotes, you know, being stiff with your kids and saying, oh, you must study this uh, course. There are some creative kids out there as well, so you should also pay attention to their passions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you're, let's move to your career path, mm -hmm. right? You are a senior economist at FBN Merchant Bank. Mm -hmm. Have you had to struggle with any gender-related situations? Oh, she's a woman, she mm -hmm. won't be able to manage mm -hmm. this, she's a mm -hmm. woman, she can't handle this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, not, not where I am, actually. Um, if anything, I don't like to, and I know it's I present. mean, within your one in my ten, industry, yes, yes. within okay. your 10 years of working and okay. above. Okay, yes, of course, of course, I have dealt with um, specific high-level meetings where um, if I would walk in, I, I can feel that's I'm not welcome. Mm. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, so meetings, I've, I've experienced that minimally. So let's say in that span, let's say three times. But the thing is, in as much as we are trying to uh, make this hashtag a re reality, that's the each for equal and pushing for gender equality, it, it doesn't promote mediocrity. Yes. Right? So if you want to be taken seriously, you need to take yourself seriously. seriously so you, first. you really need to equip yourself. For what I do, knowledge is essential. So you have to consistently be seeking new knowledge. Mm -hmm. You have to be current to what's going on with the economy, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's Africa, whether it's global, everything matters. So even though you may find yourself in a position where you don't feel welcome because of your gender, like when you walk into that room, mm -hmm. you when you open your mouth and you talk and you do what you came there to do, the aim should be that you leave there hoping that the people who didn't want to embrace you are trying to get close to you mm. because they see your value. So you've had that happen to you a number of times. So many times. Mm. I actually, to be very honest, like even in school, like people didn't think I was what we call an ethico. <laughs> so because I wouldn't do the whole aggressive reading publicly. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who thrives better at reading at night. So um, it would surprise some, some of my uh, classmates, colleagues, whoever, when um, results would come out or when a project is executed. And Chinwe has... Yeah, so it's like, I didn't know you were... Well, I didn't know you were into this. I didn't, <laughs> yeah, so, but, so yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I try not to take it too personal, but I'm, I'm very deliberate about um, just preparing Pre prepare myself prepare properly. Yourself. All right, and then you've talked a lot about being prepared. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest that with the equal for all, more women, you see more women being prepared for roles that are available? Because mm. let me speak from the point of a journalist. Mm -hmm. I know how many times I've had to approach a number of women, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's them being inti intimidated or mm -hmm. being timid mm -hmm. or thinking they're not, you know, good enough. Mm -hmm. And then some direct me to men and I'm saying, no, I want you to speak. So that's very interesting because I could be that person. It's, mm. Yeah, but you, <laughs> people don't believe that. So it's the imposter syndrome. That's really what that is. And um, I thank the people around me. I have very strong support systems at work and even across my industry. I will tell you that some of the things you've seen me outside at external events, I'll tell you that some of the, the opportunities where I'm doing things are so big were because a guy pushed me. So it's them coming to me saying, I think you should do it. I'm like, nah, I don't think I'm ready. And it's like, you're gonna, you're gonna do it. Like, this is not even ready stuff. You know your stuff, we know you, we know, we know what you can do. So you're capable of doing this. So I get, I get that. And I feel like it's something that we all need to work on. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a, I don't wanna call it a confidence issue, but I just think it's that impossible. Like we like perfection. That's what it is. We want to be perfect, but yes. but, <laughs> but with yes. guys, they know enough and they execute. So it, it's it's a it's a problem that we we need to all look into. I know it's a problem, and I'm very deliberate and intentional about it. And that's why I have a lot of uh, support systems around me who would so, push you even when you think when I'm sleeping. Be the, exactly, mm -hmm. like there are projects that have come, and I would sh I share, I share because I know that it, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. I would share and say, you know what. This looks good, but I just feel like maybe I need a year or two more years before I'll be ready to execute this. And then I'll have someone say, why? What, why are you saying that? Like, come on, like, you can do it. Mm -hmm. You've done A, B, C, D, E. So if you've been able to do those What's five things, yeah, you one? can execute on this. So, so yeah, so I've put checks in place for me. 
and I, I advise I advise people to do the same. And what has helped you, you know, stay on course in your career? And how can women out there also ensure that they stay on course in their careers? Yeah, for me, I think it's just focus. Focus. I'm a very, as I said, I'm very impact driven. So the things that excite me are things that I know that would affect someone. So if I'm writing an economic piece, we're talking about the macro economy. I understand that it's going to help your pockets. Mm -hmm. If you, if I tell you okay, oil is doing this, and this is how it may affect reserves, or this one. So you, I'm, I'm shaping your mind to make decisions that have to do with your pockets, okay. right? That's to investors or business decisions for uh, business owners. So um, for me, it's really focus. Um, yeah, like f focus, that's, that's the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the word. Stay, stay laser focused. Like, do not get distracted. Like mm. no no form of distraction. No form of distraction. Of right. course, of course, that's impossible. But try your best mm. to not uh, get distracted. Have goals. Like don't just coast. I know there are a lot of people that are just breezing. We see uh, yeah. <laughs> like have be. like have mm. goals. Like what you want to achieve, and everyone's goal or goals are different. So like be able to define uh, what you want out of of your life when we're talking about professional or business or yeah, career in general. All right, this is a very interesting conversation, but we'll um, take a quick break okay. now. All right, so let's take a quick break now. You're still watching One on One on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching One on One on Plus TV Africa. We've been speaking with Chinwe Egwim. Okay, so Chinwe, <laughs> one interesting question which mm -hmm. I can't wait to ask you. Mm -hmm. During the course of your, you know, moving up the career mm -hmm. ladder, have you had to deal with any form of sexual harassment? No. I would say no. And, um, you know, it's in different levels, really. So if I were to say a yes, it would be something like maybe some giving a, a really inappropriate comment uh, okay so i would i would regard that as harassment i regard that as harassment and i'm able to nip it in the bud early um, but it's really disturbing it's it's disturbing like we were talking and you had mentioned some things to me and it's disturbing that young uh, professionals those who are starting out have to deal with things like that and what i typically would advise is um they need to speak up Thing to speak up. Thing. Now, when you say speak up, because mm. I, rem I remember the NYC girl who called me and said to me that this is a situation. She mm. had to tender her resignation letter mm. because mm. her boss was sexually harassing mm. her. And at this point, who else are you supposed to report to if it's the CEO of the company who is oh, doing wow. this to you? Oh, wow. Okay, I, didn't, I thought it was a senior employee. Oh, no, it was the CEO oh, in wow. her case. Oh, wow. Okay, well, then I guess she did the right thing by resigning, but... In a corporation where there's um, structure and you have so many senior employees, you would have female senior employees as well. I don't see anything wrong with taking that kind of um, issue or complaints to a senior female employee mm -hmm. and um, you know expressing what's going on. I also always encourage the development of women networks in corporations mm -hmm. or in businesses because um, it's a safe space and allows for female employees to express themselves with concerns that they have. So yeah, it's, it's really troubling and um, it's something I look forward to seeing reduced or, or just being elimin eliminated in general in the near future. I mean, could it be, could it be a case of, oh, don't smile when you get to the office or just smile a bit or... No. No, no, no. Because no. to be honest, she asked it's me. Not, it's not her thing. I hope mm. you know that. It's not, it's not, it's not the girl's. It's not mm. her problem. She's, it's not what she's doing. The problem is with the, with the guy. So mm. saying don't smile or do like this or dress like <laughs> this, it's not, it's not, she's not, um, it's not her problem. She's not the problem. So it's the guys that are doing these type of things that are the problems. Mm. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. We really need to put policies in place that can fix this. So what's your personal mantra? <laughs> or why, if you have more okay. than one? Okay, I'll tell you one. So as you climb your corporate career ladder, always remember to look down and pull others up. Mm. Yeah, you must do that. You must do that, especially if you're um, trying to promote this gender equality thing. And when I say pull others up, I mean pull others that are deserving up. As I said earlier, like, um, because we're trying to bridge this uh, gender gap does not mean that we must encourage mediocrity. 
So there are a lot of women who are working hard, equipping themselves, preparing themselves for big opportunities. They're mm -hmm. there. So as you go up, always remember to look down and pull others up. Have it's you seen important. a lot of women doing this over the years? Yeah, a lot of women have done that for me. I have so many mentors and um, I always say, having one mentor is not the way I go. Having several mentors because nobody knows it all. And so I have, I have a number of um, mentors. I think I have about 15. Like actually, 50, 15, one 15. by, yeah, both male and female. I need to count mine. Yeah, 15 mentors that I'm close to, we've nurtured our relationships properly, each I give value, they give value, and um, yeah, like the female ones, they are invested in my progress, and they want me to grow, and if I'm doing something that's not proper, I will get a phone call, <laughs> and they will tell me, I don't like this, if it's a social media thing, you shouldn't have posted that. You know, so, um, and I appreciate them. They're like, I call them my compass. They show me where to go, like, directs me on, on what, to, what to do and what not to do. And they share their own mistakes with me, so I don't have to make the mistakes that they, ha they may have made. So, yeah, I see it happening. It's happening. Should it happen more? It, yes, should. it should. More people should, should um, think to do this. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I try. I understand from what you've said now that they, they help you also grow as an mm -hmm. individual, mm -hmm. both in your career mm -hmm. and every other area yeah, of your career, life. Yeah, career, personal life. Mm. Everything matters. My physical, mental, emotional, mm. um, economic, that's uh, earning capacity, all of that. Everything matters. You're, you're one person, but you have so many years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they do. Now, with respect to the equal for all, uh, what do you think companies can do to push for more of this, for mm -hmm. us to see more you know, mm -hmm. women sitting, having a seat at the table mm -hmm. in well, their organizations? Yeah, I think internal policies are um, important. So policies that encourage uh, retention of female employees. So if you look at my industry, you see, you look at the pipeline, at the bottom, it's really fat. But as you progress, it becomes really thin. So a lot of um, policies that would allow women to return to work after giving birth. Mm -hmm. So you find sometimes that a lady will go on maternity leave. She comes back and promotion, maybe promotions are being discussed or performance management um, um, period is, is on and all up. And this person is shunned because she went on maternity And this is forgetting that before that maternity leave that she may have executed mm -hmm. effectively on specific tasks. So you see a lot of um, ladies saying that they're, they're, yeah, they just want to focus on their new family. Like, what's the point? They don't feel valued when, when mm -hmm. they return. You, you hear a lot of that. So policies like that, policies that would um, encourage female employees to speak at meetings because it's like a training. So just meetings, internal meetings, are always a good place to start to build your voice because you're trying to grow into like a managerial position. So if I have a meeting with, with a team, mm -hmm. this is hypothetically speaking, I would encourage, I w you're not furniture, so I want you to speak up. So maybe things can be put in place to allow for, for women to um, speak up at meetings. Um, again, as I said earlier, women networks, they mm -hmm. help because you then get to hear what each person is dealing with and it will allow you to sit down and actually build policies that would be effective mm -hmm. for your female employees because every company is different. So what may work in this company may not work in another company. So you need to actually engage your employees to understand the necessary changes that need to be made. Um, what else? Um, mentorship like actual st structured mentor-mentee um, programs need to be put in place. Because as you said, some people don't know themselves, yes, need direction, yes. they just resume in the morning, do their thing. If you think yeah, anything, when it's five, six, enough. they go like that, almost like robotic mm -hmm. uh, uh, behavior. And um, yeah, I, I guess having a mentor would help a whole lot and having a sponsor as well because sponsors are there when you're not they're in, they're in rooms where you're being spoken about and they're able to speak for you, yeah, speak be for your you. Voice. exactly and highlight your strengths because it's not everybody 
that may know you and what mm -hmm. you do in your company. So yeah, I don't know if I've... Expected. Yeah, I think, I think you did very well with that one. Now, mm -hmm. for women, in terms of being mm -hmm. an expert in your field, mm -hmm. would you say that it's a cliche thing to say or mm -hmm. it's very necessary? Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's a necessity. <laughs> you should be an expert because um, if people, again, if we're trying to get to a point where we're not hounding over um, gender equality and we've been able to bridge that gap, if people are going to speak on your behalf, at least do enough for them to speak on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So you're not embarrassing that person that's speaking on your behalf. So for you to do that, you need to stay on top of your game. You need to educate yourself. It's not just about reading, go out, go for conferences, their online courses, study, like things are much more easy now with regards to uh, yeah, with regards to equipping yourself. So yeah, like you should be an expert. In terms of gender balance in Nigeria, mm -hmm. what would you like to see within the government space and the private sector as well? Well, of course I would like to see this gap bridged, but um there's still a whole lot that needs to be done. Now for any economy that has half of its population being represented by both genders, equipping the female economy, equipping the male economy will assist with boosting economic growth and sustainable development. So it is important that private sector, public sector, we all put our hands together to, to make sure that we're able to bridge this gap because it's an all hands on deck type situation to move this country forward. So leaving one or half of the population behind is not an option at all. So yeah, we still have a whole lot to do. All right, finally, before I let you go, what are those three things you'd like to tell that young lady out there mm -hmm. who wants to thrive mm -hmm. but doesn't have an idea where mm -hmm. to start from, how mm -hmm. to start from, mm -hmm. who to meet, who to speak with, and mm -hmm. saying, I am not enough? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I'm not going to say three things, but I'll express okay, myself. Okay, just you know, express <laughs> so, yourself. So I, I, would, I would go back to Chinwe as a younger girl. Um, I was just starting out and I, I used to study, we have, or even if we had Twitter, I don't know, I wasn't using it then. But <laughs> I used to follow people that I admired. And what, I, what I've noticed now is that the younger ones, they don't understand that the people they admire may not have the capacity of, or time to fo focus on them one-on-one. On one. Mm. But it doesn't mean you can't learn from them. I learned from Dr. Okonjo Iwala. I read her papers. I read her speeches, I, and she, she allowed me, without, before I met her, because now I know her now, but before then, she allowed me um, to see what was possible for me as a female economist. So, so for me, what I would say is that the younger girls should please invest in researching, invest in following those that... Um, they admire or look like what they think they want to be. Mm -hmm. They should, um, yeah, like there's so many tools. You have Instagram, you have Twitter, you have the internet to I use Google. Reach out to them. Yes, you can reach out to them. And don't be upset if you don't get quick responses because people are busy. People are busy. And again, um, focus. You must stay focused. And you must consistently equip yourself because you're, you're evolving. I'm evolving. I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm still growing. I, I'm thankful for the milestones I've hit, but there's still more to be done with regards to my growth. So yeah, so focus, um, equip yourself, keep learning, never stop learning. And um, the third thing, which is the first thing I said, follow those that inspire you. And funny enough, I don't learn. know if it's just me, mm -hmm. but there's a way you, I don't know if it's nature that brings you mm -hmm. and whoever it is together. And mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. they now get to know yes, you. Yes, 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 yes. Well, yes. So that has happened with me. And yeah, so, so again. Just like a conjo exactly. you mentioned now. So I can tell you, um, I think it was in 2014, uh, I had a, a meeting uh, at the AFDB um, in Ivory Coast. And that's where... That's where I stand. But she, had, but she already knew my, my stuff. Like she, she's okay, the recipient okay. of my economic uh, reports from, okay. uh, from where I work. So the name rang a bell, and then she was now placing a face to that name. So it was, yeah, like, mm. but, but the thing is, you, you, you aspire to meet these people 
but you also need to work hard so that when you meet them, you're, you're also prepared. valued. Yeah, and, you, and you're, you're a person of value. We're really out of them. time now, but this was such an interesting <laughs> conversation. Thank you so much, Yume, for joining Thank me. you for having and me. And I wish you more success in Thank your you career. Thank you so much. Path. Thank you. All right, so for more content of this nature and more, please follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, all on Plus TV Africa. I am Irene Ubani.